Maria Fossi, welcome aboard Partray. Pleasure to meet you. So excited to be here with you today. Yeah, excited. It's awesome. Um, so before we talk about Maria, I wanted to know how Frida and Willis are doing. They're awesome. And They're, how are they? Li how are they liking life on the road? They they seem to be okay with yeah? it. Yeah, they uh, they're here with me this week. They probably come to like 80, 90 percent of our tournaments. Yeah. Uh, in the states, I guess. Yeah. Overseas, I haven't taken them yet, but you know, I, I wouldn't put it past me. <laughs> what is that like? Is it, so these are her dogs, by the way. Yes. Um, what <laughs> no are the breeds? Kids, but dogs. Uh, Cavapoo. Okay. Yeah, so King Charles Cavalier and Poodle, and they're just like so sweet and just a, yeah, just great addition to the team, good company. I always say they don't, you know, they don't care if you just won a tournament or came dead yeah. last. They're gonna wag their tail when they see you walking through the door. So, yeah, um, yeah they definitely keep, I don't know, just more relaxed vibe for when I get back to the hotel or to the house uh, during the week. So it's it's a so who's watching the dogs when you're practicing and playing? They they stay on their own. They're good. Yeah, I just put like rain sounds on the background. Oh, and nice. Yeah, they'll you know do some meditation my or something. My brother my brother just adopted a dog recently and literally subscribed to like a dog TV channel. Yeah, yeah. To entertain him so, when yeah, he's gone. Yeah, I just yeah keep them, um, you know, with some food, toys, and yeah. stuff like that. And they're good at like not needing to go outside for for a few hours. So sounds nice if, and low if maintenance. If I'm staying, yeah, with with a friend and she's you know going to the back to the Airbnb before I am, I just ask like, hey, just let them out or something. But uh, yeah, they nice. just yeah live the life. <laughs> Love it. Well, I just told you before we started that I went to Mexico City uh, for the first time in February. I and I feel like of all the cities I've been to, people are most passionate. People that have been yeah. are most passionate about Mexico City. So I want, before we dive into your game like and everything, that. what do you think, if someone only has one day in Mexico City, hmm. walk them through the perfect day? Um, I think you, you have to just have like, so many of the hotels like i don't think it really matters where you stay but like their buffets are just so good yeah like you always have like a quesadilla stand and you know like a egg stand and so much great fresh fruit and juices and stuff like that so i always like my days really revolve about around food so yeah. your trip to mexico is going to be very much well, revolving around i didn't realize food. i didn't realize it's such uh, an amazing place it to is, get food yes it is such a good spot and so that's where i would start you know you just have a big old good mexican breakfast uh, and then honestly just like walking around there's there's a lot of uh, very cool like historic sites yeah. uh around like the historic like downtown area and the cathedral and museums and just art and uh, uh, the cool thing is everything's kind of within walking distance so you can still you know just do a bunch of little things or just see some of the monuments from the outside and not necessarily have to transport and to go from one to the other so just I, I love doing that and uh, like I was saying food's so good like I like street tacos or you know like you get street corn and I love that as a snack, you yeah. know, like mid-afternoon or something like that. For sure. Um, and Do you then have a favorite just restaurant a, to send people? Um, depends on, like, if, if you want to do something, like, authentic. Uh, there's this, like, bar slash restaurant um, that's been around for years, and it's owned by the same people, and uh, it's called Cantina La Veinte. So okay. Cantina is, like another word for bar in yeah. um, Spanish and they are amazing like just the ambiance and the drinks and the food uh, it's yeah it's a good spot and like they're open till late so you know you can stay after dinner and like have a few drinks after that as well and just kind of enjoy your time with friends and uh, it's a good spot and they're all they have a few locations now but they're all kind of near some historical site as well and okay those are pretty cool at night as well, just with the lights and stuff. So, um, yeah, I mean, I think there's a lot of history in, in Mexico City and I like history. So that's kind of food yeah. and history for me would be a, a great trip to Mexico City. Okay. Yeah. I went to the famous churro place. Yes. What is that called again? Yeah, you're putting it's me the, on the spot. It's the white, 
white yeah. and blue font. No, I know exactly we'll what it is, too. We'll have to look it up. Too. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Just look up churros when you're there. Yes, and churros it'll be the are top awesome. of the list. 100%. Yeah. Um, okay, so perfect taco. What's in the perfect taco? Uh, street taco, just Al Pastor. Al Pastor. Um, they, they give you like mini tortillas, usually two tortillas, some Al Pastor meat, uh, onion, cilantro, and just like lime, salt, and a good salsa. And Simple. It is so good. Yep. You can have, yeah. Five, I don't six, understand seven people that those. don't like cilantro because it kind of makes the taco. It does, just a little bit. Like, yeah. you know, you don't need a whole lot, but, yeah. but enough just to give it, yeah, like a fresh taste. Yeah. And uh, yeah, simple. The simpler, the better, I think, when it comes to like proper Mexican tacos. So I was digging into your game and you as a person, and I was trying to figure out the best way to kick off talking about the way you play the game. <laughs> and I found a quote that I think sums it up but you tell me <laughs> how sweet. spot on it is so mark kalkovecchia said this yeah he said hit it hard it'll land somewhere i like it <laughs> do you connect with that mentality or how much does that describe your game and the way you play i think so i mean in in ways of course uh but but i think that this this day and age like length is is such a big thing and it's such an advantage and um, it's something that players are constantly chasing, you know, you see it with Rory McIlroy was at peaking last year and he was still trying to hit a little bit further, right? Yeah. And, and you see a lot of the girls out here just working hard in the gym or working uh, extra hard with their swing coaches just to make sure they can get a little bit extra. Um, and, and I think for me, like it's, it's, an advantage, I guess, just to have that uh, I'm I'm already long to to begin with per se, and and it just gives me more options. I think that's the coolest thing about distance is that yeah yeah it's awesome you know hitting a drive 300 yards like I you know it's it's great but then I can also hit a three wood that goes 260 270 and I'm gonna hit more fairways with it and I'm still plenty far so like I can kind of have more options, play different types of games. And um, so, yeah, I, I definitely like to, you know, just swing hard and, and see what, what happens from there. I think the, the closer you are to the hole, the easier it is to get it in. So yeah. I, I think it definitely helps. The interesting thing that I've learned from interviewing many players on LPJ and PGA Tour and really high level amateurs and just really good players overall is swinging aggressive to conservative targets because mm -hmm. obviously everyone talks about your length and i know you've said before you're a fierce player you like to rip it mm -hmm. um, but how much does that ring true to you yeah like how conservative do you think you play from a course management standpoint mm -hmm. even though you're ripping it hard with yeah. your swing yeah i mean i think you, you still have to play play smart you know you can't just be reckless out here especially at the level we're at right now, like if you get reckless, like you're definitely gonna have to pay, you know, for for some of those shots that you try to take on, and and they don't necessarily turn out the way you want, and and you're gonna be in, in trouble more times than not. So I think, yeah. uh, like that's that's kind of why I was saying, like, while I definitely like to just swing hard and um, hit it hard, like I, I think you you do have to be smart and. Um, you know, just manage your way around golf courses. And, and honestly, there's some golf courses that, like here in LA, like you, you don't have so much room, you know, to build a yeah. golf course. So there's there's some quirky holes and whatnot. So yeah. sometimes hitting it 300 yards is not what you need. You know, you need something a little bit further back and, and kind of figuring it out from there. So I think, yeah, you just kind of have to learn how to dance with it, I guess. and. Uh, but but definitely my my essence is is in hitting it hard and and honestly I don't I don't really want to lose that. Yeah, what would you say to amateur players that struggle with playing defensive, playing tentative? Obviously, you know amateurs versus pros. We're seeing more extreme misses mm -hmm. um, maybe than a pro more often, obviously. Yeah, and therefore sometimes it's hard to swing hard, it's hard mm -hmm. to commit. Mm -hmm. um, have you ever struggled with that, of feeling tentative? And what would you say to the amateurs that struggle with that too? Yeah, I mean, I think that 
you know, if, if you're swinging hard and you get a couple like big slices or a pull or whatever, yeah, the next time you tee it up, you, you start to get a little bit more nervous maybe, or your grip gets tighter, you get tense, like, so I, I think it's definitely something that happens uh, on our side as well, even more times than, than people would think almost, <laughs> you know, I think it's, it's definitely something that, at least for me, it's, it's happened before several times. And, and I think I always try to go back to like, like, yeah, you're swinging hard, but at the same time, like you have to maintain good tempo and like, you can't just get super quick. Like it has to still have a rhythm, right? Like it can be aggressive and, but, but you definitely, you know, like have to give your time to get to the top, to have a good coil, and then you can kind of go mm. from there. So I, I always try to remind myself to like, Kind of what happens coming down, you can go as hard as you can, but on the way up, like you definitely mm. have to just give yourself a little bit of time. But I, I think for me, for like advice, I guess for, for amateurs in, in being a little more conservative, like I, I definitely encourage it. Like I think um, I joke with my caddy and my team and I just say like, you know, easy pars have never hurt anybody. Like. I mean, you're on the par if train right now. You know, yeah. You know? <laughs> I mean, so if you're if you're making pars, you're gonna be okay. And yeah. and if you hit a, a couple of close, you know, you're you're gonna be able to maybe sneak in a birdie here and there. But yeah. but I think for for amateurs, like if it's not a par and it's a bogey, well, that's still better than a double bogey. You know, it right. takes less to recover. And right. Uh, I think sometimes we we think too highly of ourselves and try to hit the perfect shot and sometimes it's better to just kind of take the easy route out and uh make a bogey make a make a par and you know just kind of take it on on the next hole how many perfect shots do you think you hit per round on average i mean three to five three to five on like a good day yeah i think like hogan it, said something very similar yeah like i think we hit, we hit so many great golf shots, don't get me wrong, but I, I think to me a perfect shot is, you know, one that comes out exactly as you had pictured it in your head. Right. The ball does what you want it to do once it lands on the green and all that stuff. And I mean, yeah, I think if you have five of those around, you're playing very damn Feeling good. good. <laughs> <laughs> so then if you are feeling tentative, um, or your grip starts to get tight, like you mentioned, what is one of your keys that you go back to? It sounds like tempo and rhythm. Yeah, I, I kind of, sometimes like I'll even just turn my driver around and hold it like by its head. Oh, interesting. And just have like a very light uh, club and, and just kind of hear for the sound of the shaft, like, like at impact and not before, not after, like, Mm. and just kind of getting a feel for like what that looks like and I'll, I'll do that sometimes like on like the more technical side but but for me like just I anytime that I'm getting very tentative like I try to like tense my body a lot and, and then it... just like have a big release mm. afterwards and just kind of try to again just gain some of that feel back again with my hands and relax my body a little bit more um, and I've, I've find that very helpful. Interesting. You're going to see all these amateur golfers swinging their driver. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll be, I'll be like, okay, I know where you got that from. <laughs> yeah. um, all right, I got a fun question for you. Complete this sentence. Okay. I play my best golf when? I'm having fun. Interesting. Yeah, that was okay. a quick one. Yeah, I, yeah, if I'm, you know, have a good group of girls or good group with like with the caddies and we're just like giggling and, uh, just enjoying ourselves, I definitely play my best. Like It's funny you say that because yeah. Chris Nagel, who was like the Monday qualifier king last year, yeah. qualified in like four straight PJ Tour events, wow. um, made the US Open. He said to us, he's been on the show a couple times, he's from my own hometown in St. Louis. He said, if he, he can have fun, he has a better chance to play well. Yeah. Versus if you're waiting to play well to have fun. To have fun, 100%. Then yeah. you're in trouble, Yeah. right? Yeah. Which I think a lot of amateur golfers would might maybe be surprised to yeah. hear that because, yeah. you know, you guys can hit, it seems like, any shot, you know? And yeah. It's, uh, I was having breakfast with one of the caddies today, and he's like, okay, like, if you 
win the lottery, like a big, 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 big purse, like, I don't know, like 500 million dollars, like, yeah. would you still play professionally? I was like, yeah, absolutely. Of course, you know? yeah. I'm like, I, I love this, I have fun. I was like, maybe instead of playing 30 tournaments, I would play 15 or yeah. whatever, or just the ones that I like. Yeah. Uh, but I would definitely play. And he's like, like, that's so awesome that you think that way. Like, he's like, yeah. I've asked a couple players and every one of you guys had said, yeah, 100 uh, percent. And I think it goes back to that. Like, I think if, if you just have fun being out here, like, I think you, you have a better chance of staying out here yeah you know compared to having to lose your card and be so f frustrated with that and so nervous and so anxious uh yeah like i think if we learn to just have a little more fun out here uh yeah it's well i want to dig into play. this for a second yeah. and it's funny you say that because our mission is helping frustrated golfers enjoy the ride again yeah so it's about that I love that type of thing. Yeah. Um, but the funny thing is, is it's I've noticed that it's very counterintuitive where especially mini tour players and mm -hmm. trying to get status and playing in a tournament or even I mean, amateur golfer playing in a member guest or whatever. Yeah. It, like the emotion and the tentativeness that comes with it mm -hmm. feels like the truth. Yeah. Because you so it is true that you need to play well to yeah. get this. Yeah. But I think what I keep coming back to is this idea of like productive thinking, not positive thinking. Mm -hmm. Of like, yeah, but does that holding on to yeah, what's the that result giving to, is yeah. it giving is it you benefit? a better chance yeah. to get it? Yeah, for sure. And if the answer is no, then yeah, what are you doing? Then why are yeah. we keep leaning into that? Yeah. Right. And that's like, um, like with my psychologist, like that's something that she says all the time, like. You know, there's several things can be true at the same time. Like you can be frustrated, you can yeah. be playing bad, you can be wanting to do better, you can be, you know, trying in at your best at the moment and all these things. And at the same time, like if you just choose to hold on to like, oh, I'm, you know, I'm playing like crap today or I'm doing this or I'm like, is that giving you anything, like you said, you know, to achieve what you want to achieve well right. no then you know let's drop that and let's try to focus on something that might not even get you what you want but it gives you a better um, opportunity you yeah. know to to achieve that like end goal that that you want whether it's you know breaking yeah. 80 for the first time or winning at the member guest or making yeah. a cut or finishing top 10 whatever it is out here winning a tournament like i think it, it is and that's a crazy and beautiful part about this sport because it is so easy to be said and i feel like everybody at this golf course right now like knows these things right like yeah. we know that that's not helping you but, but then when you do. get out there it, it is a challenge and i think that's uh yeah what keeps all of us coming back right <laughs> and it might be really easy one day yeah it might be really difficult the next yeah yeah absolutely okay so the flip question I play my worst golf when I think too much. Yeah. If I'm, and is if that I'm swing in my related, head, shot related, swing related. If I'm like kind of focusing on a lot of things, like I, uh, anytime that I play good, like I'm having fun and like it's all fast, like it's all like. Because I know you're I not a numbers to, person. You're yeah, more of a feel player, feel right? Play. Yeah. So, like, I'll talk to my caddy. We get a number. And then, you know, I just pull out a club. And, like, I just hit. Yeah. Like, my routine is not rushed by any means. But, like, it's just there's there's no thinking. It's yeah. all just very intuitive, very just connecting with the shot, connecting with the hole, connecting with, like, what the slope, the lie, everything's kind of trying to tell me. Yeah. And then, you know, when I play my worst is any time that I'm, trying to read into the lie and think okay like balls above my feet it's gonna want to go left or any time that i start to get like too analytical whether that's about my shot about my swing about what's happened in the last three holes like it just all goes to shit. <laughs> so is that a fine line for you of not moving too fast and not losing focus but still being intentional about what you're trying to do but just commit to something and go? Yeah, because I, especially as, as a professional, like you have your caddy and like, 
they they play a huge role in, right. in what we do. You know, like they they provide a lot of very valuable input and knowledge and I think there's times, again, like I was saying earlier, like we in our heads think, oh, I can pull this shot off, like no problem, 10 out of 10. But the reality is you're maybe going to pull it off 3 out of 10, right? So that's kind of where the caddy comes in and tries to talk to you a little bit. So that's where like you as a player want to do something and feel something, but then it might not be the smartest play at that moment. Mm. Um, so it's a again just a cool balance and, and dance that, that we have to have with with our caddies and, and the people on our team because they need to know when you've actually got it right like there's shots that i've hit that my caddy like after i hit them he's like i don't know how you've done that right but he's like i i felt that you were gonna hit the shot you were gonna hit the perfect shot you like were gonna after do a it. poor shot after after a great like you know it's if i'm in shot. trouble and i just see you know oh, like this crazy shot that i've come up with in my head and he'll be like okay like you see it you're clear i'm like yeah yeah like he's like okay love it let's go yeah right but then if if he sees that i'm tentative or if he sees that i'm asking too many questions he'll be like okay hey let's back off here let's reassess let's think about it again so like that's where I think it's it's the cool part about for us having a caddy because you can have somebody to be like, hey, yeah. hold up, uh, let's just punch out, try to get it up and down from there. Worst we're gonna get is a bogey and we're yep. gonna be okay, right? Yep. Uh, so yeah, it's a very interesting dance that <laughs> and, and fine line that that we have, but but again, I mean, I think that's the beauty of the sport and um, at least for me, like those situations are. Uh, like the ones I get most excited about and, and trying to pull off a shot or trying to, if you've had a bad start, just kind of restart your brain and, and get going. And uh, it's, it's a fun challenge. It reminds me of, I don't know if you've seen the story of Brian Cooper. He's on the Champions Tour mm -hmm. and he's 55 years old and he just got his card in Q School going into this season. So wow. this is his first okay. full Status. That's like the hardest um, tour to get into. Is it? Yeah. Like I think tour school for the Champions Tour gives like one or two spots and that's it. Everybody else is like wow. PGA Tour legends. Yeah. So, so it's, it's funny even you say more that. impressive. So he came on the show and he said, you know, constantly getting his own way. He struggled with depression. And then he told me that during Q school, mm -hmm. he told his caddy, just give me one number. Mm -hmm. Don't tell me what you think it's playing. Don't tell me yeah. the actual. Don't tell me adjusted. Tell me the number that you want me to hit to okay. and where you want to hit it. Yeah. And he'd say, 155 right side of the green. Okay. Boom. There you go. And he played the entire Q school like that. And that's, that's how wild. he finally got his card. So it's kind of similar to what you're saying. It's yeah. not about adding on, it's about stripping away. Yes, yeah, I think uh, it's it's so easy to, especially again with like the books that we have today and the technology and the knowledge and videos and the track man and like all these things, like it is so easy to just have an overload of information that while that can be super helpful for some players, like I think for, the majority of us, it's not. Yeah. It's it's managing how can you get some of that information because it's very valuable, you know, for your coach or for your caddy, but have them kind of keep it and then you just go ahead and hit shots. Right. Like that's, I I had a good practice round today and my caddy just kind of looked at me and he's like, hey, let's just go play golf on Thursday. Like stop trying to do something different stop trying to like play it perfect like it's never perfect it's never like you know beautiful in the sense that like it has no flaws like it's it's golf and it's gonna be ugly sometimes and you're gonna make it work and it's gonna be pretty sometimes and you're gonna make it work like he's like let's just like forget about everything else and just go and play golf and so that's that's gonna be our challenge for the week just trying Deep. to go and play golf <laughs> Do you think that that's what you got away from these last few events? Because I know yeah. coming off a few cuts, 
I know you had kind of an emotional ending to the event in Arizona. Yeah. What was, were you trying too hard? Yeah, I mean, I think I, I definitely just get in my own way. And uh, I think that the better you get, the harder it is to like forgive yourself at times. Mm. Um, I've like last week, our, our first major, like I had Monday through Wednesday, like I'd never felt before, you know, coming on to uh, first round of a tournament, like just such good preparation. I was rested, I was ready. Uh, I was hitting every single shot that I wanted to hit on the range, on the course, putting it well, chipping it well. I'm like, okay, you know, like it's, it's going to be such a great week. The, the course was a great setup for me as well, like all these things. And then I go to Thursday and like, I think I made like five bogeys in the first six holes or seven holes. Wow. And you're like, like I, did, I think I had two greens on the front nine and you're like like what what happened you know like it's not like i forgot how to play right. from my warm up to today to, right. to now or from my practice round to now and and it's definitely just yeah like trying too hard um not forgiving myself fast enough for for a poor shot or a poor decision uh and just kind of lingering with it a little too long and and it definitely you know with the amount of uh, like quality players that we have out here you, you just can't do that you know we right. like you'll do it at home and you can get away with it maybe you know you'll still make a couple more birdies and like beat your friend that you're playing against at home but here like you make a couple bogeys and like you're losing three or four strokes on the field um so i think uh it yeah as a professional like it, it is frustrating because you know you're so much better than what you're actually playing. Yeah. And and you actually have data to back that up. You know, right. not just like a, like I see it with my brothers. They're like, oh, I'm hitting it so bad today. Like I'm better than this. And I'm like, dude, you never practice. Yeah. Like, you yeah. know, like you can't say that. Right. But I'm like, I I know I can do better than you know how I've been doing. And and I think it's just kind of reminding yourself of that when you're out on the course uh, over and over again. Like. I, I think it's it's just so important. So then what do you attribute that experience to last week and that, that slow start? Do you attribute that to expectations because you were trending so well and mm -hmm. it was, you know, the biggest stage? Do you think you were trying not to make mistakes early and trying, like, what was happening in those first six holes? I, I definitely think there's there's a huge part of just expectations and um expectations and like hope at the same time you know yeah. like i think uh when when you prepare so hard for something and you prepare so well for something uh it's it's our nature to expect to do well right uh and i think if if at the first few holes you don't quite see that like at least to me it just kind of like threw me off and uh again got me to thinking instead of feeling and and mm. i think it just it was very hard for me to restart and go back to just having good positive feels like i was telling myself to feel something mm. instead of just feeling it um so i think that's i started to like get technical i never get technical um i instead of you know walking together with my caddy and like talking and trying to figure out together i like either walk ahead or walk behind and like i'm thinking all these things instead of feeling them you know i'm thinking like okay you gotta feel relaxed you gotta like just watch your breathing for a minute like trying to do like all the grounding exercises you know that like i've yeah. worked on and and meditation and with my psychologist and stuff and Again, it's just all so forced. Nothing is, was coming natural that, right. uh, yeah, it was just difficult to, to get back to ground and, and be able to start again. Um, so I think it's like, yeah, just something that I, I need to continue to work on uh, because it's, it's going to happen again. You know, like right. I think bad shots are going to happen. Couple bogeys on the first few holes can and will happen. Yeah. And, and it's just, 
Look at John Rahm in the yeah. Masters. Yeah, yeah, four putt, yeah. and then you know he he went on to win. So it's yeah. it uh, yeah, it's just kind of getting out of your own way a little faster than than everybody else, and I think that's what makes a difference in the long run to uh, who's holding the trophy on Sunday. So needless to say, you probably weren't having much fun in those first six holes. No, 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 no <laughs> not at all. It uh, kind of reminds me of something an author has said on our show which he said, he, he writes mindfulness books and different mm -hmm. things, and he said, it's kind of like, if you can't focus, it's easy to be like, focus, focus harder. Yeah. But the only way to focus harder is to remove distractions. Yeah. You know, you can't actually get yourself to focus. To fo yeah. Kind of like you just can't your get yourself to feel. To feel. You just have to yeah. kind of, I like, I love what you said about you caught yourself thinking, not mm -hmm. feeling. That could be a great, sounds like a great key for you. Where yeah. you can like pick up on it and yeah. say, oh, I'm getting into that old pattern. Yeah. Let's get back to what I do best, which yeah. is feeling. And, and I think for me too, like, the, the, there's so many thoughts, right, that we have yep. positive, negative. And, and I think it's just also for me, like choosing what thoughts, like, are actually beneficial for me to hold on to and what thoughts are just like, you know, I just need to watch them flow down the stream and let them right. go, right? right? Like if uh, if I'm getting tense and I'm seeing, oh crap, like there's OB to the right and, and you know, water on the left, like, and I, I've just pulled my driver on the last, like, and I'm getting tense, like, and I'm starting to think like, oh, like don't hit it left. Well, that's a thought that like has a lot of power Mm -hmm. but it, it's not going to do me any good instead. And then if I happen to have another thought that's like, okay, like just focus on that tree through the fairway or whatever it is, like, okay, that's a positive thought. Like that's a powerful thought that is actually going to help me get closer to where I want to be. Mm. And, and I think that it's so much easier to hold on to a negative thought, unfortunately, than it is to a positive one. But, but I've, yeah, just been working a lot on, on being aware of what I'm thinking, when I'm thinking it, and, and only trying to grab, you know, the, the good things and, so and try to let go. So you're on where you want to go, yeah. not where you want to avoid. Yeah, yeah. And, and two, like, focusing on where I want to go and not where I've been, you know? Like, it mm. doesn't matter if I started with six bogeys, like... I still have 12 holes left. I still can make another six birdies or eight birdies or who knows. Like, mm -hmm. uh, so I think just kind of letting go and, and, and again, just feeling one thing at a time. Like I think for me, any time that I do good, like that's where I'm the best at. Like yeah. just letting go fast and, and getting back to feeling confident, feeling like I've got it and, and not questioning any of that. Yeah. So how would you describe your relationship with the mental game? I mean, it, it sounds like you've done a lot of work with it. Um, you just referenced something that clearly that has a huge impact of going from Monday to Wednesday mm -hmm. to Thursday, because you didn't forget how to hit the ball. Yeah. What is your relationship with, your, with the mental game and how, what do you work on with your coach specifically? Yeah, I mean, I think right now it's, it's definitely, um, the, the weaker link uh, in, in my game. I mean, and, and it's weaker and strongest at the same time in a way. Like I think um, there's days that I just, you know, can't seem to hit a golf shot, but I, I keep myself in it and I keep fighting and I keep somehow putting myself in, in a place where I can continue to score. Uh, so, you know, that's where like my mental strength comes in. But to begin with, I shouldn't have hit it the way I was hitting it. You know, like I've been hitting it so well and kind of, I sometimes keep myself from accessing like that, my talent or my, however many golf balls that I've hit during the week and have hit them perfect. Like those are still there, that swing's still there. And, and having access to that, on command like is is where i've struggled a little bit the last few tournaments last couple of months um and and i think like i'm always kind of trying to play catch up and 
I've been good at catching up, but you know, it's it's just not enough. Like I have to just be able to just start and, and go. So it's a fun relationship, I guess, right now with with the mental game where like I am so confident over the ball sometimes and then just feel like I've never played golf before. Yeah. Uh, so it's it's definitely, yeah, just something that I'm trying to work on constantly, trying to, uh, again, just be very honest about um, where I'm at, where my head's going and, and be able to kind of talk to my psychologist about it, talk to my coach about it, talk to my caddy about it and be like, hey, I'm like super nervous or I'm anxious or uh, I don't know, sometimes like I'm emotional for whatever reason, you know, like for, for us women, like if, if you have your period, like that has a huge yeah. impact in, in your day to day and, and like physical pain, but then also yeah. like emotionally, you're different. I've learned this from my wife. Yes, I've learned a lot about yes. it. <laughs> uh, so it, it's, it's, you have to be very vulnerable with the people around you, I think, yeah. to continue to grow. And uh, I think I've, I've learned to, to do a better job of that. And, and I've seen it um, pay off and, and I'm excited for it to pay off. Uh, of course with a trophy, but just with good feels on the golf course. And I think good feels are going to lead to yep. an ultimate trophy at the end of the day. I would guess that our listeners might think that the ladies on the LPGA tour would never feel uncomfortable hmm. or nervous yeah. or worried about, you know, where the ball is going because there just seems to be so much consistency, mm -hmm. you know, in the game. Yeah. And so what do you lean into when you're feeling um, nervous and you feel like you just don't have it? Like, do you have a go-to game plan where physically you can play kind of a go-to shot, fairway mm -hmm. finders, knockdowns? Mm -hmm. And then how do you then, if so, how do you pair that with your mindset for that day? Do you accept that maybe yeah. you, it's a grind day? Yeah, I mean, I think even in, in your warm up, like I personally like to shape shots a lot. Yep. Uh, you know, and sometimes I'll be warming up and I'll be trying to hit a draw and I can't hit it, you know, and I'll hit a fade and I'll hit it just fine. Or I'll try to hit a little bit higher and it'll come out good. Um, but then I try to knock it down a little bit and I just seem to like struggle with my starting line. So then I'm like, okay, you know, like today, a fade is easier than a draw mm -hmm. and a higher ball flight is where I'm most comfortable. Right. Okay. And I just kind of, I'm okay with that. You know, I'm not trying to force a draw. I'm not trying to force a deeper trajectory. Yeah. It's just, you know, my body is not there today. And, and I think it's very important to acknowledge that and be okay with like doing something that might be slightly different to what you're used to instead of constantly trying to fight and make it work the one way you want it to work, right? Because yeah. we, we were talking earlier, like we had three to five perfect shots around. So like it never goes the way we want it to go. Right. You know, you're always in some capacity like failing you know it's you're not hitting the shots you want they're ending up okay but it's not how you'd picture it it's not how you drew it up um so i think for me it's very important to kind of recognize that early on in the round and mentally know that that's okay like mentally know and allow myself or forgive myself and say you know today a, even if you absolutely want to hit a draw you can try but if it doesn't quite work out, like it's okay. Yeah. Uh, maybe let's just try to hit a fade and know that you're comfortable there. Sounds like a lot of acceptance. Yeah. Like you just kind of have to accept you, what you, you got do. today. You have yes. to accept the shot. Yeah. And you know, I mean, short you, you know, like short memory and two, like if, if you hit it offline and you like, it, again, it's, it's so much easier said, you know, today than, yeah. than when you're out on the course and actually doing it, but like, if you hit a shot online, like getting angry over it is not gonna change the lie you're, that you're gonna have. It's not right. gonna change 
the fact that you missed it 30 yards right or 30 yards left. Like, it's already done. Like, it's so much better to just be like, okay, like, shit happens, you know? Yeah. Like, let's try to figure it out from there. And, and I think that whenever we are able to do that, um, it, it's whenever we, you know, just play our best. And I think just forgiving yourself for not being perfect as uh, crazy as perfection might sound on the golf game, like, <laughs> it, you know, I, I think it's it's such a big thing. And, and again, I think the person who forgives and forgets the most um, is the one hosting the trophy on Sunday. Uh, all of us are amazing ball strikers. All of us can putt, all of us can hit it. You know, I think at the end of the day, the difference is, is all in the mental game and and who, yeah, just kept it together and, and went through, through the struggles a little bit better. Yeah. So when you said you feel like you were playing catch up, did you mean literally like you start slow and then feel like you have to try and make something happen later in the round versus starting off solid and kind of keeping your foot on the gas? Yeah, uh, I think that, but then also like with the way you feel, like I think mm. uh, like confidence comes from confidence in a way, like, you know, if you start with like two or three birdies in the first few holes, like you're gonna walk a little bit taller, <laughs> like yeah. whether you like it or not, you know, yeah. like, so I think, um, the, the, I say play catch up where like you're just kind of starting slow and, and you're catching up to where you want to be and where mm. you how you want to feel, um, which also relates to scores, right? Yeah. Like I think uh, the, the better you feel, the usually the scores tend to be a lot better as well. So uh, yeah, like I think. So you're saying almost start the round as if you're three under. It's, yeah. Like, like have I, the demeanor, yeah. act as if you're already yeah, in the lead. Yeah, just walk a little bit taller. And, yeah. and I try to remind myself that, like, I always try to hit a few putts before I, I go out and, like, I don't know, make two or three, like, five to seven footers and, and just feel good, feel good about my putting stroke or on the range, just like, okay, let's play this, the first hole. Like, let's hit driver down this side and then we're probably going to have a pitching wedge in just hit that and you know hit two go good good shots and you're like okay like i've got this like you know yeah. it's it's i got the number i got the ball fight i i i feel good i'm happy with where i'm at and uh i think transitioning that to to the golf course um is the the hardest but easiest you know thing yeah. at the same time because yeah. you you almost like you said just have a head start in in the way you feel and and you can just kind of transition onto the golf course. So let's talk about pressure for a second. Yeah. I've got three examples for you. Okay. Which event did you feel the most pressure in? Okay. Your pro debut at a US Open, mm -hmm. which you finished 12th at, yeah. by the way. Pretty good <laughs> debut at a major. Yeah, I'll take it. <laughs> um, the women's amateur at Augusta National, mm -hmm. which has been talked about widely, you finished runner up. And then representing your country at the Tokyo Olympics. Uh, all very uh, special in, yeah. in their own way, uh, but by far the Olympics. Really? Um, yeah, 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 yeah. I think Tell I, me why. I have tears in my eyes right now. It's just it at home. Like we we grew up watching the Olympics, and we love sport. And I think for an athlete, there's no bigger stage than the Olympics. Um, with golf, of course, that's kind of a new, you know, event yeah. that we get to play every four years. But, but for me, like, I grew up watching the Olympics. I grew up, like, loving to represent Mexico and wanting to represent Mexico one day at the Olympics and getting to do it. And um, I, I was the first group out the first day and I was actually playing with a Japanese girl um, so we had a bunch of the volunteers, because of course we couldn't have crowds, uh, but all of the volunteers that were on property were there watching this Japanese girl tee off. And uh, I was next, and my only worry was 
similar to, to Augusta on the first tee, but just being able to put the tee on the ground and hold my ball on the tee, you know, because I was just shaking. like shaking so bad. Yeah. And I had great uh, tee shot, hit it to like 15 feet, made the putt for birdie. And I literally had tears on my eyes, uh, even now. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, yeah, very special. That's awesome. <laughs> So do you believe that pressure is real? Or do you think it's just something we tell ourselves? Um, I think it's real if you want it to be real, I guess. Yeah, I think um, pressure is great, honestly. Like, I think it, it shows that you care. It shows that you want to do good. Um, and honestly, like, I think pressure is awesome. I think the thing that keeps athletes and people in general from achieving great things is not pressure, but expectations like we were talking before. Like, I yeah. think pressure makes you work harder almost, I think. Mm -hmm. I, I, I think, yeah, like, I think pressure is a, a beautiful gift that, like, I don't know, that we have. Like, yeah. I, I think it's it's awesome. Like, I, I look back to those three tournaments that you just called out and you know like I have a huge smile and I'm in my head like thinking about uh, making the cut on the line at the US Open and then going deep in the weekend and how we played at Augusta and like that birdie at the Olympics literally just made me cry yeah you know so it's just uh, and yeah I was I was scared and I was you know anxious and, and feeling all sorts of things but it, it was only because I wanted to do good and because I knew I could do good. And uh, yeah, like for the Olympics, you just have a whole country cheering you on. And, and I think it's it's so special. Like if, for me, if, if I could only win one time as a professional, I, I would 100% hope that, that it's a gold medal mm. uh, at Olympics. So hopefully, it's more than one win, but <laughs> yeah. that I get one at the Olympics, yeah. It sounds like that's a pretty cool thing. We talked about acting as if. Mm -hmm. That's a pretty cool thing to kind of keep in your memory bank. Yeah. And like lean into the feels of it. Because like, think about how impactful one birdie, and this was years ago, Yeah. <laughs> has on you. Yeah. And then almost like, could you pour yourself into every hole every week yeah. and you know feeling that way feel or, that yeah. same i mean that's hard to do obviously that's the peak of the peak is representing mm -hmm. your country but it sounds like that's you know was a really impactful maybe yeah. one of the best moments of your career yeah 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 i mean i think um it, yeah it was just something i had dreamed of for for so long and seeing it happen was yeah just wild so talk me through because there i just laid out some tr some patterns there right <laughs> we've got the debut yeah. you made the cut on the number and then it's like okay i belong here yeah. let's win this thing and you finish almost a top 10 your first event at a major same thing you felt nervous first hole olympics birdie so what can the amateur player learn from what you told yourself and what you leaned on? Because like you said, you felt nervous. Yeah. You, you felt all the feels, the pressure, mm -hmm. but you had to go back to something yeah. that allowed you to perform regardless of the brightest lights and the biggest moments. Mm -hmm. So what can the average player learn that you lean into in those moments? I think for me is um, trusting, you know, that one, uh, I belong here, right? Like I, I earned the spot that I have uh, at the US Open or at the Olympics or playing at Anwa for the first time in the inaugural year or having a tour card. Like I've earned all of these things. Nobody gifted me anything, right? So yep. I think for me, a lot of it is is you're you're good enough to be here like you know just go out and and show yourself that not even like prove to anybody else but just show yourself that yeah that you do belong that that yeah. you are 
worthy of, of being here. And, and I think for me, like, whenever I just kind of let go of, of the stigma of what are you doing here or like you shouldn't be here or you're not good enough to be here, it's like, no, hold on, like I am, yeah. you yeah. know, like I, I really am good enough to be here and, and I've shown myself that I am. So you're uh, moving out of doubt into belief it, yeah. and confidence. Be- like even if you don't in, feel it, it yes, you're reminding yourself really of it. just really telling myself that. Cause yeah. again, like I think so many times you, you don't feel that way, but but I think I, you have to be reminded of that. And, yeah. and I think for, for us, uh, I have an amazing support system behind me. Like of course, starting with my family and, and closest friends, but my coaching staff and uh, my Kairi in in the course and, and that's like his biggest job yeah and and the thing he has to repeat the most is like hey dude like you're damn good like let's go it's just like I say before like let's just go play golf and and it's gonna be okay yeah you know and and at the end of the day like what happens here especially for amateurs like what happens on the golf course like it doesn't matter like they right. still have their job they still have right. you know their family and uh, for us too, like we're still healthy. I'm living my dream. Yeah, I've missed a couple cuts and it, it sucks. You know, it's not like you don't care, right. but but I think just having some perspective as well and uh, all these amateurs are out there to have fun. Like, you know, <laughs> you're not, you're going out to the course because you want to be there. So right. just take advantage of, of that want and, and just, yeah. Yeah, go enjoy it. I think it. this is really important. I'm going to challenge a listener because I think it's easy for a listener to hear you say, I earned it, I belong here. And they're thinking, well, yeah, of course. Like, yeah. you're one of the best players in the world. But I think the key for them, though, is, yeah, but you have doubts, too. Yeah, so for sure. They, oh, for sure. We think that we, like, deserve to feel the doubt because we're quote not as good yeah or you don't but, practice as or we much, don't practice or, or but it, you yeah. know we're hitting it ob and, yes. and all that stuff but i think what you're saying is is that that feeling is going to pop up whoever you are yeah it doesn't so matter you have to convince yourself yeah that you can hit it yeah and two i think like again for for an amateur like in a way like you earned your time off from work or whatever right. you know to go and play 18 with with your guy friends or with your girlfriends or whatever it is like so i think like that's also kind of a, a cool way of looking at it that like hey let's just come out here have some fun let's if you like to have a few drinks when you're playing have a few drinks i have friends who like mezcal like to, maybe yeah mezcal <laughs> smoke a cigar yeah. whatever the heck you like to do if you like to drink water then drink water i don't know but you know like just it's supposed to be fun and, and it is a game and yep. i think uh having that like childlike mentality of just doing things for fun um it's it's the biggest gift and the biggest flex <laughs> i yeah. think you know that that you 100%. can have yeah so a little bit of a lighter question. I know we're almost at time. We talked about Augusta. I got to ask an Augusta question because yeah. I went for the first time last year. It was amazing. When you, if you went back and you could only play one hole 18 times in a row. Oh, that's a good question. What okay. hole at Augusta National would you play 18 times? <laughs> That's a hard one. Um, I would say either 11 or 15. Okay. I think 11 is I the love 11. best hole on the course. Really? Yeah. Um, Why is that? I think, especially from the back, I think it's, it's one of the hardest before they redid it. But I think it was just one of the hardest tee shots that the guys had all year to then not only have that, but then you have to hit one of the hardest second shots. Yeah. You know, onto that green that slopes towards the water, the fairway slopes uh, towards the water as well. So everything wants you to hit it left, right, while it's a, you know, you have a good amount of space. It's not a great place to be either. and I just think it's such a good golf hole. 
and 15 it's just fun you know yeah. 15 just hitting driver and then hitting it over the onto water. the green over yeah. the water like i i don't think many shots get more fun than than that i was surprised how much i love two two is a lot of fun i love like big downhill like slope, sloping yes. yeah. holes yeah 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 um it's a fun second shot too like yeah. trying to get it in between yeah uh the bunkers and onto the green and yeah do you think because you've mentioned feel not technical having fun hitting shots do you think that that is one of the reasons kind of like jordan speeds talked about where you never have a a flat lie and you're having to create yeah. shots do you think that's one yeah. of the reasons why you played well there i think so yeah i i think augusta definitely challenged you to move the ball both ways off the tee uh especially left to right which uh, for a lot of the girls that's a harder shot to hit yeah like you know it um so it's it's a fun challenge and then to some of those greens like even chipping like you would hear some of the guys like they're trying to hit a draw on a chip to get like spin off like right. one of these crazy right. slopes and like all these things and you're like you're chipping like yeah. it's and you know even then you still have to play around and, and be super creative um and it's yeah it really makes you connect with with your feel and and your instincts and in the player in in all of us you know yeah. and, and i think uh yeah that's why i enjoyed it so much and uh i've gotten lucky to play a couple more times and after that and yeah i've loved it amazing uh, yeah both times as well so i gotta ask you about your golf ball for a second because i just shot a video with chris trot trotty oh, yeah he says hi by the way thank you um last week and we just posted it today and it was cool because for me you know i'm a mid single digit handicap i've never understood the difference between mm -hmm. the ball that i play other than it zips back on an approach shot or it yeah. stays at my pitch mark. Yeah. And so I finally got to learn, We he, he fit me. We did a oh, that's on awesome. the golf course, golf ball fitting, no track man with a TP5, TP5X and a tour response. Okay. And now that I've learned a little bit about the differences of the ball, I'm curious what ball you play and how you went about choosing that. I play the TP5X. Okay. Uh, and for and is that me, for distance and less spin? It's or? a little less spin, and uh, I spin it a lot with my driver. Yep. Um, so I think players either choose their ball because of their wedges or because of their driver. Like oh, I think that's kind of irons are usually somewhat similar. Like I think the biggest difference you see, of course, with the driver with more speed. Yep. And then with the wedges because you have more spin. Um, and for me, like a ball that's a little bit softer, like the X or even the Tour Response, like uh, was too spinny off the tee. Mm. Uh, and while I was still getting distance, it was just not a ball fight that I liked. So that was kind of how I went there. But I still get enough feel around the greens and enough spin with my wedges to where I'm not like wanting to go play the 5 and not the 5X. Yep. So that's... Uh, yeah, I've played it for probably like five or six years now. I played it in college as well. Oh, okay. And uh, yeah, just really like that ball. And I know you've played a couple questions and we'll let you get back to oh, your prep. Um, you played golf with Annika Sorenstam. Mm -hmm. I forget if it was a little, was it a year, year or two ago? Yeah, 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 probably, yeah, two years ago. Curious what you learned from playing with the GOAT. Because uh, we had her coaches, her former coaches on the podcast, Lynn and Pia. Oh, that's, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And yeah, we just, I've heard some great stories about her. She's, so. she's awesome. Like I think, um, and, and I see it with Lorena as well. Anytime I play for fun with her in Mexico, uh, they want to win at everything. Hmm. They are just like so competitor. competitive. Uh, just like, it, one is the only number they see, you know? Like, I think um, the, their drive and, like, how hungry they are to win, I think, is, is beyond, like, something that you can even explain. Mm. Uh, so I think, like, their drive, again, even today, like, after years of being retired, like, they still have it. And, and it's just such a powerful 
thing to witness, I think. Uh, but then golf wise, like she's just smarter than everybody else, you know, like she'll bomb a driver over you, but then like hit it to the fat part of the green. If she can make a 30 footer, she'll make it. If not, you know, it's an easy par mm. while you're trying to sneak it into a flag and then you hit it in the bunker and you're short sighted and then you make a bogey and she just made an easy par stress free yeah you know so it's a cool combination of like having this immense drive to succeed with like just a lot of brains so it's mm. um yeah i think sounds a, like a, a lot super of discipline powerful, too. yeah a super powerful combination of trusting when to go and when to hold uh, and and i think it's yeah, as good as it gets, clearly. How does that compare to your experience playing with Rory and meeting Rory? Um, it's similar. Like, I think that I, I actually had a super cool conversation with Rory a few years ago uh, where he got very personal and sharing a lot of his own stories and struggles. And uh, I think it's, it's cool to see, like, again, even for me as a professional, like, you think that the guys, like, are so much better or they don't struggle or they don't feel the same way that we do. Uh, but kind of seeing him be vulnerable with me and, and uh, just kind of share some stories and tell me that, you know, like kind of validate the, the way I was feeling uh, was, was very special. And again, like I think he's a player that wants to go at every pin if he can. Yep. But then he also understands that sometimes you just need to have a easy two putt par and, right. and move on yep uh so i think that uh like you said just discipline um i think it's also one of the factors that that makes them so so different and so much better than than everybody else and they they're gonna be players that we're gonna remember you know for years to come yep uh, so yeah definitely awesome uh role models and yeah examples to to try to follow yeah that's a good one <laughs> that's a good one to have for yeah. sure um, anything we didn't talk about that you think our listeners could use hearing um, that, that they should know? Or is there anything we talked about that you think you really want to hit home and leave our listeners with and reiterate before we go? Yeah, I mean, I think we, we spent some time talking about it, but just like the importance of uh, kind of being confident and comfortable on the course and... Uh, understanding that like we said you know like everybody struggles in their own way and uh, it's everybody like choosing is, confidence yeah i think is yes. what i hear from you yeah and and also acknowledging that sometimes it's harder to feel confident than other days and and that's okay right like yep. i think sometimes it's going to be a bigger challenge than than others and uh i think understanding that it's a work in progress constantly. Mm. Um, kind of gives you a, a broad uh, just perspective into things and allows you to kind of have an open mind and an open heart and just kind of embrace a challenge a little bit better. So, yep. so yeah, I think we're all more similar to each other than I think most people think. Love so, that. Yeah. Well, thank you so much thank for you. hopping aboard the train. Love it. Thank At you. At Maria Fossey one yes. on yes. Instagram. Uh huh. Um, thank you guys for watching. Thank you. Hit the subscribe <laughs> button and uh, yeah, thanks so much for awesome. the boy. We'll be cheering you, you on this week. I appreciate that. Thank All you. Right.